Hey guys, Thunder E here and welcome to our full walkthrough of the Honor 10. Now I've been doing walkthrough videos lately for devices that I can't spend too much time on, but I still want to showcase. And one of them is the Honor 10 right here. And uh, one of the first things you realize with this device is of course the color scheme here, really nice. It's got similar style to that uh, reflective color scheme you found on the Huawei um, P20 Pro. This is really nice. Now, the cool thing about this device, first off for me, is the feel. This is a 5.84 inch device. Feels smaller than that. It's, it's actually almost six inches if you think about it. And what you have here is a couple of things. The rear, you do have uh, 16 and 24 megapixel uh, lenses. 24 is a black and white, as, as you know. Honor likes to use the black and white that they also use on the Huawei cameras, but it's got an AI camera. You can see the AI logo there as well. Now we go to the bottom. We do have a USB type C port and a headphone jack with a built-in DAC, which I'll tell you off the bat, it's improved. It's better. I don't know how good the amp is on there, but for my use case with this, I was actually um, impressed with the improvement. So I'll see they've done a much better job with that right there. Power and volume button rockers on the right hand side, left hand side is your SIM tray. And then you've got the front of the device and uh, this is an LCD display. I'm gonna wipe it as I keep talking. Uh, you've got a 24 megapixel front facing camera, which honestly does some decent stuff, but we'll get to the camera in a second. Now, they call this button the ultrasonic front uh, fingerprint scanner. It really is just this regular fingerprint scanner in my mind that is just underneath, slightly underneath the glass on these embossed. So it's not really under the glass itself, it's under the bezel area. But you can go ahead and you can see how fast that actually unlocks your device. Pretty snappy, I would say. So once you have it unlocked, we go in here, we've got our Spider-Man wallpaper. Wallpaper links will be there in our Pinterest, so definitely follow and check that out. Uh, first off, this is running EMUI, uh, but it feels a little bit more like a stock Android experience. It's running Android 8.1. Uh, and speaking of that, what I've noticed is some applications just don't, uh, I can't download them on here. So for instance, YouTube Music wouldn't download. I couldn't install that. And I could also install uh, Google Keyboard or Gboard. So that's just something to let you guys know off the bat. So right here on the home screen, you can swipe left or right. You can go here and you can see your Google feed. If you long press on the home screen, you've got some settings for the home screen. Uh, changing the icon layout. You can have home screen loop. You can also um, uh, add different things to layout. You can see this floating button right here, which We'll, we'll deal with it later on in a second. Let's go and drop this down just a little bit so for you guys here. So here you have this um, and uh, take it up again. We do have an app tray. We can scroll through. As you can see, the app tray here is in alphabetical order and you can jump to apps via just the alphabet itself, which is nice and simple, very easy. You've got your suggested apps on top. And as we move over here, so I'm in app tray, just close these out. You can see some of the things that are already presets uh, for you to jump into. So you've got a uh, screen recorder, which is nice. You can use that. Uh, you've also got your battery saver there. Those are the two things I noticed quite just easily off the bat. It's easy to just jump in and, uh, and access. Now going into our settings here, we have a few things uh, to mention. We've got the Wi-Fi networks, very simple, basic. It's all about your wireless networks you're using, call as well as also mobile networks. Uh, you've got your device connections here. Um, you've got uh, Huawei Beam, which is basically Android Beam, uh, NFC, Bluetooth, and mirror sharing. And also you can print directly from the device. Again, you can see how, even though I've got big hands, but this thing really feels comfortable to hold and use. Um, then we've got app notifications, or app notifications right here. Uh, and then uh, we're going to battery. Battery, we have a few things. So we've got power saver, ultra power saver mode, screen resolution is smart. So we can change between 1080p to 720. The resolution here is 2280 by 1080, because of course that notch, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, you've got app launcher management, you've got battery usage. You can also go in uh, and see what applications are using the most. And right now for me, it's Google Play Services. Uh, battery optimization, you can optimize your battery. Of course, you see that with a lot of devices. Um, and then you can go into the settings here and see power and density prompts and things you can use to manage your battery use. 
Now, as we go down to display, we have a couple of things here in display. We've got, of course, sleep, eye comfort. We can change, of course, our wallpaper and home style drawers as well. So you can have an app tray or not. Full screen um, apps to, of course, maximize the app space. And then you have a notch. So you can turn it on, turn it off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. So you get the idea there. Uh, whichever way you want. I'm just going to keep the notch there for now. And you, you have that as well. And then, of course, the smart resolution screen is there and smart rotate. So the screen will rotate to follow your direction, your face. I haven't found this to be quite useful yet, but it does work sometimes now. So basically, once you turn it on and you start turning your face, the screen will rotate. Again, it's not the most effective, I would say, for me in my case scenario. So when we go into sound, We've got just some basic sound stuff here. So there's really not much in the sound department in terms of um, uh, uh, sound features. You've got tones, dialogue tones, notification, volume rates, and that's pretty much it. Nothing else there. Uh, storage here, we've got a storage manager. It tells you how much storage we have, which is 128. And you can clear up your storage. Security, uh, uh, privacy, fingerprint, uh, face unlock, which is pretty fast. Uh, passwords, you've also got that. So you've got accounts as well, which of course is the accounts on your device, which I will go into. Smart access gives you some of these smart controls. So you've got um, mini screen view, shifting keyboard, motion controls, so you can do a smart screenshot by uh, double tapping your knuckle, stuff like that, it's pretty easy. You can also do a split screen gesture by drawing a line in the middle. If I see if I can do that. Again, some of these gestures can be a little finicky. I know that if I draw a C, it takes me to camera. So you get the idea there with the gestures uh, themselves. And uh, if we go back and a few more, there's of course the smart cover, the schedule powered off, and there's voice controls. And of course, there's general accessibility for people who need those options. Um, and then we go down to system, and that shows us, of course, about the phone system updates, we can run updates, CEM UI 8.1. We're also running Android 8.1. We've got the current version here. So if you go about phone, you can see some of the phone details, 8.1. Our CPU is a Kirin 970, four gigs of RAM on this version, uh, 128 gigabytes. Everything you need there shows you plus the security patches. So that stuff is really basic. Now, one of the main things for this device, of course, is a camera, but I will tell you, it's a really snappy device. Having the 970 on here ensures that you've got a really speedy device. Now, when we talk about the camera, camera opens up pretty fast. The camera layout is interesting. Uh, I wish they took more from the, the P20 Pro layout, but it's sort of similar. So. You've got your different camera options, video, photo, portrait, aperture, um, and then you can go into more, which will give you time-lapse, HDR, light, monochrome, so you can go black and white on that. And we've got a few more monochrome options we can go into. And then we've got panorama, and you can cycle through all those. So that is pretty nice. Now, when we go back to photo here, let's go back to photo. We've got a couple options, so you can see the, uh, the throw pillows there. This is just a normal photo. I can take a photo that I can go in and snap with the AI functionality. What I've noticed, the AI tends to punch it up a little bit more. It, you can clearly see it while looking at the camera, probably not on screen here for you, but it does kind of punch it up a little bit more for you. And then you've got uh, moving pictures enabled. So you've also got your flash if you want that. Um, and then you can enable AI photography as much as you want. Um, and then your general camera settings are here. Nothing too crazy. You can save in RAW. It's only supported in Pro mode. So that's just something to take note with that if you're going to take uh, RAW photos or RAW files. But I will say the images are, have come out pretty well on this. Um, but the front-facing camera, this is the kind of images you see on the front-facing camera. They're actually pretty good. They do a good job. They kind of highlight quite well the environment where you are. Um, here is, of course, uh, a photo with the AI camera. Without, you can see it's a little bit punchier with the AI camera. This is without, this is with the AI camera. So you can see that. Again, the front-facing camera, just showing you some of the images you get off this device, which is nice. Again, some of the things you notice with the AI camera is how it gets really punchy. So this image here, the yellow of the building, you can see how it showcases off that image. But when you go to the AI camera, 
it really stands out, at least the AI photo. So that's just some of the things you actually see right here from uh, this device, Go. So the floating home button is the last thing we'll talk about here, and it's really simple. You can drag it around anywhere. Uh, you can also use it as a home button. So if I go into, say, you know, Chrome there, and I press down, that takes me home. If I was in Chrome and I wanted to go back, I can tap once, it takes me back, back. If I wanna to go to a different application, I can hold down, swipe left. It takes me to the app. If I hold down again, swipe left or right, it'll take me to the previous application. To activate this, it's really simple. You go into your app tray here, you see the navigation dock, you can turn it on or off. Very simple, straightforward. So there you have it, guys. If you have any questions, any, any comments about the Honor 10, let us know. We'll try and answer them for you. We like what we have, we've seen here with the camera. It is solid for its price point. Again, this is priced, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, 499. Um, so this is a very compelling device at that price point uh, with a really solid camera for its price. Uh, also some really good functionality. The one thing I'll, I will say though is the applications, some don't actually work yet with it. Um, and uh, we'll see if that actually changes in the future. But any questions in the comments, let me know. I'll try and answer them for you. Otherwise, don't forget to like and share. Favorite this video, subscribe to the channel, and always enjoy your entertainment.